Welcome to Green Signals with me, Richard Bowker, here in a very beautiful but very cold uh, Peak District. Now, normally I'd be here with my good pal and co presenter Nigel Harris, but Nigel lives in Lincolnshire, I live in Derbyshire, and this is a bit of an impromptu um, decision to come and take some video. Um, we've been thinking for a while that we're going to do some hopefully uh, interesting out and about content. One of the things we were looking to do was go and visit some railways that have been uh, disused or closed but they've been repurposed for community use and I'm here today on the Montel Trail and it really doesn't get more of a community asset than this. I'll tell you a bit more about it as we go along. Um, today I'm going to just walk my favourite section which is from Great Longston up to uh, Monsell Head. I'll tell you a bit more about it as we go. Um, but don't forget, if you like this video, uh, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'll tell you a little bit more about green signals as we go. But for now, let's get walking. Here we are, as you probably noticed, walking up a bit of a hill. It's quite an incline, this. The line started to climb at Rosley, which is behind me, and where Peak Rail, the Heritage Railway, have their base. And it was pretty relentless all the way up to Peak Forest. In fact, it's about 15 miles or so from Rosley to Buxton. And in that time, in that distance, sorry, it climbs about 600 feet. It was roughly a one in a hundred gradient. So, uh, so severe was it. Uh, the heavy freight trains required a locomotive at the rear, a banking locomotive as it was called, uh, to assist them. But uh, now, it doesn't feel quite that steep, but it's still, you can still sense the gradients as we, as we climb up. That chap overhead is uh, doing a great effort, actually. Oh, <laughs> just to say that, he turns around. It's the village of Great Longston itself and Longston Edge. Good cycle ride, that actually. Steep. Must admit though, on a day like today, excellent way of getting warm. What's really curious about this line was that in the late 50s, and really by, I suppose, the very early 60s, it was actually still a really busy route. And it came as, I suppose, a, quite a significant surprise that it was slated for closure in Richard Beeching's um, uh, report of 19, uh, the early 1960s. But then what's really odd is it didn't actually close until 1968 under a Labour Secretary of State for Transport, Barbara Castle, who'd... And bearing in mind the Labour government had been around for sort of three years or so by then, it just make you wonder why they still proceeded with closure. Certainly, I do think Beechy gets a bit of a hard time, unfair at a time with this particular line. But nonetheless, close it did. We're just coming up to Great Longston Station. And Great Longston Station, which is actually remarkably intact. You can probably see the platforms as I'm approaching them. Um, Great Longston Station actually closed in 1962. But interestingly, not completely. There was a nurse by the name of Alice Boardman who lived in the village and worked at a hospital in Buxton. So, although British Railways closed the station, one train in the morning, heading towards Buxton, stopped to pick up Nurse Boardman, and then one train in the evening brought her home again. And that practice continued, I suspect, until the stopping service on this line ended in 1967. Remarkable, really. So even today, one could imagine it really wouldn't take very much to get track back on this particular line. 
It's one of those railways and stations that feels as if it's just sleeping. One of the really great things on this route are all the local uh, you know, sort of guide points and signs. This is great, this just sort of shows you the route so that walkers can find their way easily around. So you head up towards Wydale. This is such a popular uh, bit of railway these days, bit of track. Um, runners, cyclists, walkers, even the occasional horse actually. Um, and in the summer, it's unbelievably busy. Yeah, I love this next bit. Just about. We're a few hundred metres north of Great Longston Station. And we come out into the into the sunny section just ahead, so out of the cutting. The only challenge with this bit is it can get jolly windy as the wind is blowing off Longston Edge. And of course, I'm completely disorganised today. Um, this was such an impromptu thing. So I'm on my iPhone, not the GoPro, and I even managed to forget the little windshield things that you stick on the microphones, so if it gets too blustery, we can always pause for a bit. But it is a fabulous, fabulous uh, section of the walk, this, as we come out of this cutting. One can really feel the climb as well. I mean, it is absolutely rem relentless. It must have been quite something for, for a steam engine. And just as we are now approaching Headstone Tunnel, helicopter goes overhead. I wonder if that's the Prime Minister. This is um, always quite a dramatic feature, and you can see the ice formations. Gosh, it's so cold. It's incredible. It's rather spectacular. On a day like this, wow. Really amazing. So the, the trail was reopened in, I think, about 82. So the line closed in 68. And I think the track had all gone by 70, 71, something like that. Um... Then they reopened it in 82, but not the tunnels. You had to sort of go around the tunnels. The tunnels reopened, I think, in 2011. And what a godsend that was, because it meant that you didn't have to climb over, over hill and down dale. Haddon Tunnel, which is actually quite a long way behind me, it's just uh, south of Batewell, is the longest one, although technically it's not a tunnel actually, it's really cut and cover. Um, this is a proper tunnel. This is something like, I'm going to say, I'm going to guess, I think it's something like 530 yards. So it's a decent old length and quite spectacular. They are now all lit. which is a jolly good thing. They're a little bit of a menace sometimes though. Um, some walkers, you know, with those dog leads that sort of extend for about half a mile. Occasionally, you've got to watch, make sure that you don't trip up on them. They're quite a good sort of ankle garrote, really, if you're running along. This is a spectacular tunnel, this. I've always thought this really quite something. A few drips in places. They've laid concrete down the centre, which is great. <coughs> but there's still some stone chippings to the side, which is also good. Okay, so here we are, coming towards the end of the tunnel. Now, the image might be a bit burnt out just because of the light, obviously, but it'll become clearer as we come out. Gosh, it's properly slippy here. And this takes us onto the viaduct. 
This would have been a marvel of engineering in its day. Striding out across the valley as it does. Five spans, 50 feet. An amazing construction and it really is absolutely spectacular. I never tire of this. I don't know how you ever could really, and it must have been something. The driver of a train coming out of that tunnel and then immediately crossing over this absolutely incredible viaduct. Now, I confess, I do have a slight issue with heights, but this is so good. We've got to go and have a look. Absolutely glorious. It's amazing limestone scenery. It is quite something. Let's head onto this side. <laughs> And up there, you can probably just see some chimney pots. Here's a hotel with a view that is rather splendid. So I think we'll wander up and have a look. So here's the path up. I tell you, it's not for the faint hearted, this one. It's not so bad in this uh, weather because it's really hard underfoot, so we're okay. But in the summer, it is a little bit exciting. I think I better concentrate actually. Well, here we are. Quite the climb, and I've just had to get my breath back. But I hope you agree. That was worth it. It really is the most iconic view of the viaduct blending perfectly in with the rest of the landscape. The railway disappears up that valley just where the sort of the trees end if you follow the line of the railway. It's just around the corner really is Monsell Dale Station which is really only for tourists I think in the day and then it disappears into the distance through more tunnels at Lytton and Crestbrook till eventually arrive at Millersdale, the other side of that hill. But it is a most spectacular view. There's another brace cell climbing up. Yeah. They do a cycle race at this hill. Can you believe it? Anyway, gravity will take me down. Well, I'm rather glad I didn't film coming back down that path. But I've had to dub the audio in a couple of places. It was a little bit lively on the ice, but we made it. You know, just as we go back into the tunnel, standing at the top there does bring to mind the Midland Pullman. Let me just pan around and we'll just have another little look at the viaduct. Yeah, the Midland Pullman was an amazing train. It only ran from 1960 to 1966, by which time the electrification of the West Coast Main Line had opened to Manchester and it took 45 minutes of the journey time and and that was it really. But it was, I suppose, a bit of a forerunner to the HST uh, with a power car at both ends and 
luxury coaches, it was silver service, it was dining at every table. They had two complete trains, one as a spare, so it was ruinously expensive to operate. One would go down to London in the morning from Manchester, and then it had come back in the evening. It wasn't timed particularly well to begin with. I don't think it left Manchester till about 9am. But I suppose at least it was the railways trying to do something a bit different, and it would have looked absolutely spectacular, painted in this glorious blue as it thundered through Monsell Dale and over that viaduct. Sadly, the, uh, none of the trains survived now. All the carriages were scrapped in the 70s. It was a bit of a shame. There's still a bit of a footage. And actually, there's a middle and pull that been recreated by um, Jeremy Hoskins and uh, his company. And you can actually at least experience what it must have felt like uh, to travel in that kind of style. So well done, Jeremy. It's a really, I've been on it, I took my father on it, and we had a fantastic day out. Never eaten so much in my life, but it was great fun. Anyway, back through the tunnel. Well, thanks so much for watching Green Signals. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and one of my favorite walks. Um, if you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, that'd be great. Um, we have loads of content on the channel. Nigel and I cover history, we cover the modern railway, we cover the future, we talk about HS2, we talk about freight, we talk about tickets. We've got some great guests. We've had Lord Peter Hendy, the chairman of Network Rail. We've had Mark Hopwood, the managing director of Great Western Railway. Alex Hines, the managing director of Scotland's Railway. We've got loads more planned. So do tune in. If you subscribe, you get notifications of new videos and new content, new podcasts. Um, if you're interested in the Monsell Trail, do check out Peak District National Park's website. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, there's good car parking at Hassop Station and at Miller's Dale Station. There's cafes. You can rent a bike from Hassop. Loads for the family to do. And as you've seen, it's an amazingly beautiful walk with fantastic views of the Peak District. So that's all for now. Hope you've enjoyed it. And see you soon.